Welcome family and friends to this day of celebration and new beginnings. Today signifies the creation of a new home, a new family for the both of you. May you be fulfilled by each other's love and friendship. May you be overjoyed by the promises you're about to make and the life together that you'll create. And remember that in every marriage, there are good times and bad, times of sorrow and joy, but marriage is a journey, a time of adventure and excitement enhanced by the love, the trust, and the dedication and faith that you share with one another. Both of you are blessed with God's greatest of all gifts, and that's the gift of abiding love and devotion between a man and a woman. While your commitment begins with the two of you, it effect radiates outward. It touches your family, it touches your friends, and ultimately all who feel your love each to the other. When this commitment is seriously made and continuously fulfilled, it leads to the richest and the most rewarding of human relationships. Within the Bible, nothing is more important than love. And of course, we are told the beautiful truth, God is love. We are assured that love conquers all because God is love. Love is the great unifier. It's a universal feeling and truth. And we're reminded here today that it is the very best part of humanity. It's not any single moment, not even a huge moment. Rather, it's the million little moments that happen in between the big ones which are the experiences that uniquely create our own love story. Love is patient and we all know it's kind and it's honest, but love believes in hopes and love truly endures all things. All right, number 10. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone, but John has a bit of narcolepsy, so um, it's great that he'll have you by his side to elbow him and, and keep him awake. When John was four years old, uh, he decided for some reason that he wanted to go swimming, even though we don't have a pool. Uh, so our dad came home one day uh, to John sitting naked in the garage shivering because he wanted to go swimming in February. So please tell him that he can't go skinny dipping. All right, number eight. You'll be there to help pronounce his terrible pronunciations. So I think the best example of this is Simmons. Somehow he pronounced it Simons. And uh, maybe he played too much Simon Says as a kid. I'm not really sure. But at least you'll be there to coach him along the way. Seven. You'll tell them that his singing voice is very, very bad. So you need to be there to tell him not to sing Mississippi Queen, um, or make sure that next time you do karaoke, it's in a private room and not a public room, so. Number six, you're able to drive a car. I know, big if true. But obviously John's had a few incidences moving to New York and spending uh, 10 years or so there. You haven't really needed a car to get around, but you know, since moving to Boston, obviously he's had a couple uh, issues as well. So we're happy that you're there to support him by driving. Right, five, John is very clueless when it comes to anything pop culture. So, you know, John says that he works with some people that are younger than him and he's out of you know, he just doesn't understand what they talk about. So at least you two will be there on a Friday night to share silly 
Instagram stories and videos and stuff, just to make sure that he knows what all the, the youth are talking about today. So I asked his nephews to describe John. I'm not gonna say which one, but one of them said stinky farts. So I'm glad that you're a good cook, and so I trust that will address any GI issues. Uh, three, he needs someone to tell him to be less unselfish. Yes, I said that correctly, less unselfish. All right, number two, you have quite the purse collection. So we know there's plenty of space to keep some Snickers on you. Uh, I think any of the in-laws out here can attest to Bernhard Hangry. It's a real thing, and I think it's about the only time I've seen John really agitated. But number one, we can both tell that you guys both love each other very, very much. And uh, despite his said practical narcolepsy, uh, he really wakes up when he talks about you, Megan. Um, so we're very happy to have you in the family. Yeah, so, I mean, John might not be on the list of noted uh, Hoosiers, but you have us in, you're in our hearts. So we're, we're happy and we want the best for you and someone to spend, like Megan, the whole rest of your life and to look after and to minimize the times that he embarrasses himself. So thank you for taking those duties on for us. Megan, we're extremely happy to have you in our family. You have a wonderful parents, a wonderful upbringing, and they've done a wonderful job, and we look forward to what the future brings. So cheers to you guys. We love you. For those of you that don't know Megan, she was the kind of kid that would wear nothing but a bathing suit and red cowboy boots, dance into the beat of her own drum. She's the light of every party. I used to literally be afraid to introduce her to my friends because everyone ended up loving her more than me. She's the kindest, funniest person I know, completely captivating, bringing smiles to everyone's faces. She is a spark and can manufacture it all on her own with no one's permission and boy, I just wanted to be like her. As the years went on, Megan's spark grew and my admiration grew with it. Even being the older sister, I truly felt that I followed in her footsteps. You taught me how to be funny. I would literally reuse your jokes with my friends until they caught on and was like, huh, that's so good, was that Megan's too? Megan, you always show up. Whether it's visiting me halfway across the world or running over in the middle of the night because it solves some crisis, anytime I needed you were there. And you really taught me how to finish each other's sentences, sandwiches. Wow, that was a close one. She almost blew that. I remember when you first came into the picture and Megan was so excited. I met this guy. He's like literally met like no one I ever known. So charming and unique. He studied in Europe. And you went to an Ivy League. Whew. He has a PhD in biomedical sciences. He worked at Clearview. He plays soccer. He is so talented, smart, and studious. Well, you know what? We just call that nerdy. And two, hello. Have you seen me? 
I've taken complete satisfaction that my sister has searched the world for a soulmate and literally ended up with the guy version of me. It's true. For those of you who don't know, those are all my qualifications too. So it was really amusing when she was laming. I was like, oh yeah, you've never heard of those things. So who is Jonathan Carl Bernhard? Just kidding, Bob and Deb. I know his real name is Christian. Throughout 2020, the world was being ravaged by a global pandemic, but the Lopez Boston household was faced with a contagious virus of its own, the love of John Bernhard. <laughs> it was inescapable, contagious. It didn't discriminate. It started small. He would mediate an argument or two, make us some tea, humor us while we binge watched true crime series, but it grew in earnestness and magnitude quickly. He truly believed in the innate goodness of people, and I'll never try to stop emulating him. Thank you, Megan, for bringing him into our lives and sharing him with us. John, you've become a brother and a bonus baby that our family never knew they needed. In many ways, Megan and John are very similar people. They're both focused and driven, enthusiastic and silly, fiercely loyal to the people they love the most. They challenge each other, support each other, not afraid to call each other out when necessary. And I'm actually very fortunate because I may be the only person in the room that actually has gotten to witness their love grow from day one. So to end, John, can you take Megan's hand and place your hand over hers? Now remember this moment and cherish it. This will probably be the last time you have the upper hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd like to have everyone raise your glasses. Here's to the bride, a sweetheart, a bottle, and a friend. The first beautiful, the second full, and the last everlasting. And here's to the groom, a man who kept his head even when he lost his heart. I love you guys. Cheers. Megan, I'm finally willing to admit that when I promised to be your Boston tour guide as a condition for you to go on a date with me, that maybe I was a bit underqualified and out of my depth. But wow, I am thankful. But from date number one, I know it was apparent how special you were and how my life would never be the same. Your infectious spirit, good humor, quick wit, and obviously gorgeous smile drew me in from the get-go. But it's your kind-heartedness, patience, interest in others, seeing the best in everyone, and overall selflessness that has completely made me head over heels for you. But I promise before God and our family and friends to have and to hold this wonderful blessing that is our relationship. For better and for worse, to use every experience to strengthen our bond and better serve you as a husband. For richer and poorer, to balance our budgets, to ensure as many charcuterie boards and foreign travel as possible, and for sickness and health, to continue to use my PhD training to ensure your COVID tests are always accurate. <laughs> to love and cherish until death do us part, to build this love from the ground up. I love you more than words can describe. I'm excited to join the Lopez family I'm excited to make you a member of the Bernhards. I'm truly blessed that from this day forward, you are mine and I am yours. Jonathan Christian Bernhard. <laughs> I thank my lucky stars I ended up in Boston. I recall seeing you for the first time, standing there against that brick wall in South End, waiting to shake up my whole life. 
You charm me with your humor, your intelligence, and your generous soul. You are the partner I've always longed for, and today is nothing short of my wildest dreams. Your light is blinding, your laughter is contagious, and your love is so fulfilling. You've brought so much happiness into my life. I don't know what I did to be so blessed to have you. I am so honored that you've entrusted me with your heart, and I will work hard to protect it. I promise to continue the small things, including Boston Nova Sundays, outdoor dinners on the patio, our small highlights when we are avoiding work. I promise to sprinkle episodes of The Wire between my Stranger Things and True Crime binges. <laughs> I promise to keep you safe. And this is for the Bernhards. I will always look over you when you fall asleep in unfamiliar places. <laughs> Unless we both fall asleep, then we're out of luck and yeah. hopefully my sister's around. I promise to minimize stress in your life. Therefore, I'll always happily drive, <laughs> especially in new cities. I promise to wait till Thanksgiving to put up Christmas decorations. Wow. Good While problem. these promises may change over time, there are some things I can say with complete certainty. I vow to cherish and support you during our highest highs and our lowest lows. I vow to listen to you when you don't feel heard. I vow to never stop dreaming with you. I'll always be adding and checking things off our list. I vow to never stop working to be the best version of myself for you and our future family. I vow to put you first and give you all of me. Till the day I die, I vow to love you. I'm always in your corner. I loved you yesterday. I love you still. Always have and always will. This is the beginning of our legacy. I look forward to growing old with you and building our lives from the ground up. Probably my most memorable moments actually occurred during the years of weekend soccer games and tournaments, including the four years she played college ball at the University of Idaho with these gals over here. Go Vandals and go Wolfpack. Bridget and I would absolutely love to watch her play, and we would look forward to attending every single game that we could, even when it meant having to travel halfway across the country to see it. There is one game in particular that will always stand out in my mind. It's got to be one of my favorite memories of Megan. She must have been 12 or 13 years old, and it was her second season playing for the San Diego Surf Club. Back in the day, I used to try to incentivize Megan on the field by offering her a reward for the goals that she scored. It was typically a small monetary amount, say $2 to so for gold, and maybe a $5 bonus if she happened to score a hat trick in a game. But at the start of that second season, I decided to sweeten that pot substantially. You see, around that same time, our kids have been relentlessly asking us for computers. Well, unfortunately for them, those requests have been falling on deaf ears when it came to Bridget and me. But then I got to thinking, maybe I could leverage this whole computer craze to set some really lofty goals for them. So I said to Megan, hey Megs, I'll tell you what, if you can score six goals in one game this season, I'll buy you that computer. I remember Megan just smile thinking of that possibility. I imagine, or I suppose, that she was imagining herself in front of that computer, that brand new computer. And I just smiled back at her, just thinking to myself, silly girl, that's, that, that's just never gonna happen. Well, sometime around mid-season, there came a game where Megan had actually managed to score three goals by halftime. By then, news of our deal had gotten around, so our whole sideline was urging her on. The likelihood of Megan scoring another three goals in the second half was virtually nil. But, to my surprise, the goals just kept coming. She scored her fourth goal, and she scored her fifth. And with each additional score, that sideline erupted with louder and louder cheers. 
And finally, as I'm sure you've probably all guessed by now, Megan found the net, the back of the net, one last time to score that sixth goal. And that, my friends, ended up costing me the price of a brand new Dell computer. The truth is, I was so proud of my daughter that day, so very proud, that I would have gladly paid the cost of two or even three computers in return. Yeah, that was my daughter out there. Megan, you stole mom and dad's hearts the day you came into this world, and you've blessed and enriched our lives ever since with ever so many moments such as this. And today, mom and dad are thrilled to see you embark in a new chapter of your life as Mrs. John Bernhard. It will be a new and exciting adventure for you with a man who truly adores you. And John, it goes without saying, I have the greatest respect for you. You demonstrated all the traits and qualities I could ever hope for in a son-in-law. And I know that you will love and care for Megan above all else. I admire that you speak highly of your family. And I'm extremely grateful that you've only shown warmth and affection toward ours. But most importantly, I can plainly see that you make Megan happy. And to me, that's the greatest gift a father could ever ask for. So it is with genuine enthusiasm that I welcome you into our family. And now I'd like to invite everyone here to please raise your glasses and join me in wishing the newlyweds a long, healthy, prosperous, and truly happy future together. Cheers to Megan and John. Welcome, Megan, to our family. Thank you, John, for bringing Megan to the family. And very simply, uh, a toast to, to Matt and Bridget for this great party tonight. Thank you. With everything I've ever done, I give it all to everyone for one more day. 
Another night I'm waking through Another door I walk into I can't break And it's a winding road And it's a long way home So don't wait for someone to tell you it's too late Cause these are the best days There's always something tomorrow So I say let's make the best of tonight here comes the rest of our lives I count the steps, the distance to the time when it was me and you So far gone Another face, another friend, another place, another rim But I'll hang on And it's a while